It had been three weeks since I moved to this public school, and I already felt like an outcast. My world had been turned upside down. What I thought was perfect had become a nightmare. My dad, who I'd always seen as an angel, had been arrested for multi-million dollar frauds. Everywhere I went, people called me names like Jailbird Jr. and Con Girl. To take my mind off those hurtful words, I started helping kids with their math in an after-school tutoring program. I liked to teach kids in the schoolyard because the library was too small and made me feel uncomfortable. Honestly, I really wanted to do something good and make a difference, but it didn't seem like it was enough because the mean girls at school, especially Becca and her friends, just wouldn't stop teasing me. But one day, I had had enough. I was minding my business, teaching some kids in the schoolyard, when Becca, along with her minions, came up to me. What is happening here? How to get away with crime 101? <laughs> Hey, Haley, how does it feel to have famous criminal parents? Ugh, what I would give to have a mute button for her. What did you say? Becca, I'm not my dad, but you obviously have an unhealthy obsession with me, and that's not my problem, so why don't you focus on yourself instead? <laughs> oh, wow. You got some nerve. This'll teach you a lesson, you dirtbag. And then she kicked dirt on me and <laughs> laughed. That was the moment I snapped. I punched Becca hard, but when I saw her minions ready to fight, I knew I had to make a run for it, and in doing so, I ran into the last person I ever wanted to see, Axel, and Devin and Felix following behind him. They were the infamous Diablos. Besides being the three hottest guys of the school, they were also real troublemakers. They weren't evil or anything. It was just their mysterious aura. What's going on here? Hey, Devin. Hi, Axel. Um, how are you? He asked a question. N nothing We were just, it doesn't look like nothing to me. It ain't over, Blondie. Phew. I was sure I would be seeing Becca again but at least she was gone for now. Uh, thanks a lot. Not so fast, princess. I said thank you, right? You owe us big time for getting you out of that Becca mess. Yeah, so from now on, we'll be expecting you to do stuff for us, like do our homework, carry our bags, basically anything we say, and we'll protect you in return. Deal? Uh, no. I don't need anyone to protect me, and I absolutely positively did not ask you to rescue me. But since we're such kind-hearted souls, we helped you anyway. And let's not forget, Becca is a two-time champion in wrestling from our school. So what's it gonna be? You gonna get your butt kicked by Becca or let us help you? Ugh, the jerk did make a good point. Okay, fine. I'll do it. Don't judge me. I'll be safe this way. Good. See you around, princess. Hi, everyone. I'm Haley. Like and subscribe before I continue. Come on. I'm waiting. It had been a week since I made a deal with the Diablos, and I gotta admit, they've been pretty dang good at keeping me safe. Becca totally steered clear of me, and everyone around school seemed to be giving me the celebrity treatment. Whenever I walked into the cafeteria, kids would scramble to clear a table for me, and when I'd stroll down the hallway, they'd make a path for me like I was a freaking queen. But everything comes with a price. Can't have nice things for free, right? Since the Diablos were acting as my bodyguards, they made me do the lamest stuff ever in return. From carrying their bags, to buying them food, to being their personal cheerleader while they played basketball. I was even doing their homework, even though I had offered to tutor them tons of times. Nah, my head hurts when I look at books. The idea of studying gives me the chills. When we have you, why should we study? Um, to graduate, Dumbo? One day, I decided I was done with them and their ridiculous demands. I wasn't getting any time to focus on my tutoring program, and I just wanted the Diablos to be gone. So while doing their next homework, I purposefully got most of the answers wrong, and when they got their grades back, the look on their faces was priceless. Is this really happening? Pinch me, Axel. Pinch me now. I can't believe I got a C+. Plus. You sure this was the best you could do? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's the first C plus in so many years. My mom is going to be so happy. Nice job, princess. They're happy to get a C plus? What kind of monsters are they? Are you guys for real? C plus? I'm a math whiz, and I feel ashamed I did these assignments. I can't believe I'm saying this, but from now on, I'm going to teach you guys math. Got it? I don't think so. Well, I know so. Just zip it, Axel. While Felix and Devin started laughing like crazy, Axel just gave me death stairs, but I didn't care. I was determined to make the Diablos killers at math, no matter whether Axel liked it or not. Every day at school, I had these tutoring sessions with the Diablos. At first, I was a little intimidated by them, but I quickly realized they weren't so bad. Devin was always trying to show off and kept bragging about how many girls were after him. One time he even asked me to be his fake girlfriend so other chicks would back off. Axel was kind 
kind of an enigma. You never knew what he was thinking, but I would often catch him staring at me, and it always made my face heat up. Felix was a total sweetheart, always playing music, but as I got to know them better, I realized they weren't so bad after all. But what I admired the most was how these guys always had each other's backs, especially Felix's. He was like the younger brother of the gang, and it was clear that the other two looked out for him. In the few weeks I tutored them, I found myself caring for him too. One day as I left school, I passed by the music room and saw Felix inside, looking down and sad. Something was wrong. Hey, everything all right? It's just that my dad's been really struggling lately. He's not like he used to be, and mom told me it's because of a huge loss in his business. He's too proud to talk about it, so he's been trying to hide it from us, but I can tell something's wrong. I just miss the old him, and I really want to help him. It really hurt me to see him this way. I feel ya. I miss my dad too. We were so close before he went to prison. Felix, you gotta talk to your dad. Let him know you love him and that you're there for him. Trust me, you're a charmer. He'll listen to you. Felix hugged me and said he felt better. I was happy. And when I left, I saw Axel and his words took my breath away. Thank you. Sometimes he needs to talk to someone other than us. You're thanking me? Did you hurt your head or something? You sure can ruin a heartwarming moment. Aw, oh, come on. I was just kidding. No, don't be so grumpy. You can smile a little. It won't bite. Are you seriously trying to tease me? What if I am, Mr. Party Pooper? Saying that, I ran away, and Axel chased me until I spotted the janitor's closet. Without thinking twice, I dived inside, and wouldn't you know it, Axel followed right after me. But before I could blink, the door slammed shut and locked, trapping us both inside. It was one of those doors that could only be opened from the outside. My claustrophobia kicked in, and I started panicking. At first, Axel thought I was playing, but I guess seeing how panicked I was, he was worried. Haley, look at me. Look into my eyes and breathe. I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. You're safe. That's it. Breathe. I can't stay here. Please. I need to get out. We'll be out of here in no time. The janitor stays in the building till evening. He'll come and definitely open the door. Don't worry. As I calmed down, he continued to talk to me softly, and I felt like I was being transported away from the tiny closet. He held me tight, and slowly, my breathing became normal. He wiped away my tears and placed a kiss on my head, making my heart flutter. Did this just really happen? Oh, it did. It was perfect. After that day, something between us changed. Axel was more gentle towards me, and to be honest, I liked it. A couple of days later, I was having a one-on-one -on -one math tutoring session with Devin. He was being his usual self, flirting with me and trying to make me laugh, but then he said something that caught me off guard. I love it when you laugh. Haley, I think, no, I know, I have a crush on you. Yeah, right, says the biggest flirt ever. No. I'm serious. I've never felt like this for anyone before. The next day at school, I was so worried. I just had to clear things up with Devin and tell him. I had feelings for Axel, not him. Hey, Devin, can we talk about, um, last night? Only if you promise to go to the prom as my date. And I guess, be my girlfriend. That's the thing, Devin. I'm sorry, but I don't feel the same way about you. I'm sorry if I gave you the wrong impression. What? You're kidding me. Are you dating someone else? Who is it? Tell me. Is it Axel? What? Not that it's any of your business who I'm with. Right then, out of nowhere, I heard Axel's voice. Perfect. What if it is me? Do you have a problem with Haley and me being together? I should have asked earlier. So Haley, would you like to go- Ouch! You're such a jerk. You knew I liked her. Whoa. They were both <sighs> mad and looked ready to rumble. Then Felix showed up, looking all kinds of pissed off. Are you crazy? Fighting over some chick? We're brothers. Come on, let's go. Haley, not you. What was that for? None of this was my fault. It had been a couple of days since the fight between Axel and Devin, and I had been avoiding the Diablo ever since. Felix had been giving me glares, and I had no idea why. But I was about to find out soon. Despite everything, I still missed all three of them. I was feeling pretty down, so I decided to focus on my studies to take my mind off of it. Just then, I heard a tap on my window. I looked out and saw Axel hanging there like some kind of Romeo. What are you doing here? I'm here to tell you something. I've been wanting to tell you this for a while now, but I was too scared. Haley, I really like you. Um, will you go to prom with me? I thought but you'd never ask. Prom night was finally here, and I was filled with excitement. As I arrived at the prom, my eyes immediately fell on Axel, who looked stunning in a black tuxedo. Then I heard a voice behind me. It was Devin. Hey, can we talk? What do you want, Devin? I asked for Haley. Are you her personal assistant or something? Devin. Hey, Axel, you go inside. I'll talk to Devin. Haley, I wanted to apologize for the way I behaved. I should have never said the things I did, and I'm really sorry for it. Forgiven, but only on the condition that I get my goofy friend back. Deal. Prom night was amazing, and when I went for some punch, I ran into Becca. I was ready to face her off, but her words took me by total surprise. Hey, I'm 
really sorry for before, you know? What I did wasn't cool. I was wondering if you could do me a favor. Could you ask Devin to dance with me, please? Glad you realized it. Sure, Devin will dance with you. Come on, at the end of the night, we all gathered to play a round of Truth or Dare. When it was my turn, I chose Truth. Little did I know that Felix had something in store for me. His question left me absolutely shocked. So, Haley, tell me, how can you even look people in the eye after your dad messed up so many people's lives? Yeah, my dad was one of them. Yeah, I took your advice and I talked to my dad. He told me everything about how your dad scammed him. I'm sure you knew what he was doing, but you chose to ignore it and keep getting your nice stuff. Am I right? You know what? You should feel absolutely disgusted with yourself. Felix, she deserves every bit of shame she feels for her dad's terrible actions. Felix's words hit me like a ton of bricks, but what hurt me more was when Axel punched him. All because of me. Without saying a word, I quickly ran out of the party. Axel called after me, but I kept running. I knew that I had come between him and his friends once before, and I didn't want to do it again. I felt so bad, but I stopped talking to everyone and didn't even attend my high school graduation. Axel called me numerous times, but I ignored every call. I loved him, but I knew the Diablos were better off without me. But after applying to college, I got accepted, and on my first day walking across the campus, I bumped into someone. Into Felix. Hey, Haley, please, please. I'm so sorry for what I said. I'm, I'm ashamed. I really am. What your dad did, it was never your fault. It was wrong of me to say it. I should be thanking you. Why? If it weren't for your tutoring, I'd never have graduated. My dad, he's so happy. This is the college where he studied, and now I'm here. I owe this to you. Thanks a lot. I'm glad I could help in some way. I hope you forgive me. I promise, Haley, I will spend the rest of my life trying to make it up to you. Felix, your words really stung. I always thought of you as a close friend, and so it hurt even more. Although, I understand what you were going through when you said those words, so I forgive you. As Felix and I sat and chatted, he told me that Axel hadn't spoken to him since that night, and it made my heart ache. I knew I had to clear things up with Axel and set things right. I could have taken the door, but I wanted to make an impression. Haley, wow, I didn't expect to see you here. Axel, I need to tell you something. I ignored your calls because I didn't want to come between the Diablos. I thought I was doing the right thing, making a sacrifice, but every time I saw your name on my phone, it was like a dagger to the heart. You have no idea how hard it was to ignore your calls, but now I know I was wrong. Axel, I missed you so much. Haley, you have no idea how much I've missed you too over the past few weeks, but I wanted to give you space, but you're here now, and I need to tell you that, Haley, I've fallen for you, and I truly care about you. Axel, I, I feel the same way. I didn't realize it at first, but I think, no, I know I love you. I love you too. So, wait, Diablos? They call us that?